Hey everyone, this is Josh for episode th- uh, 74, actually, of the Solopreneur Grind podcast. I am pleasured to be joined by Richard Lau from Logo.com. Richard, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here, Josh. Awesome, Richard. Really excited. And can you just tell our listeners uh, to get us kicked off a little bit more about you and, and kind of what you're focused on right now? Sure. I've been, um, you know, been building Logo.com for about a year now. And we are powering an, uh, a logo maker online so that uh, you, you, with a very minimal amount of information, we can then present um, a visitor with dozens of, uh, dozens of original, um, professional uh, logo designs that they can then decide, uh, tweak, you know, change colors, fonts, what have you. Um, and so, yeah, it's, a, it's a, an online software as a service logo designer. Got it. And as someone who's started many ventures and needed quick logos uh, built, it, it sounds like a super helpful tool. So, Richard, l- let's go back a little bit further, right? This is far from your first venture. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about your entrepreneurial career? That's a super broad question. But maybe what we could do is go back to kind of where it started, right? H- have you been... Have you been one of those entrepreneurs since your teens or was this something kind of after school stopped kind of ha- what was that first entrepreneurial path like yeah i think you know when when i was young i i didn't do you know the, the um you know i did the the regular like mowing the lawns for the neighbors and, and things like that but you know i had my regular um the, you know, kind of newspaper route when, when those were <laughs> probably dating myself there. Um, <laughs> but my, my dad was an entrepreneur, you know, self-employed. And so I, I would spend my summers um, going out um, in the truck with him and he did commercial kitchen equipment repair and, and seeing what it was like to, you know, generate your own business, to be responsible for, um, the, you know, the for, you know, eat what you kill kind of thing, right? In terms of you are relying on yourself for any revenue and your, you know, the buck stops with you. So I got my first um, hands-on experience with that, more of a, of a self-employed um, aspect of entrepreneurship. And then, you know, I did some funny, uh, some funny things um, with my girlfriend, now wife. Um, we, we got these coupons that were good for a local amusement park. And we actually went to the amusement park and sold them. You know, they were worth like, you know, $25 off we were selling them for you know five ten dollars each um, and that, that was a that was a good little hustle um, and every you know everyone won um, except I guess the amusement park right. um, and then uh, you know I went to university and graduated from university and I was working for a um, a, a, um, a beeper company right pagers mm-hmm. beepers and from there um, one of the guys that I was working with went off and started his own dial-up ISP. And from uh, that's where I started to really, you know, shine to the entrepreneurship side. And so I started to do my own thing in registering domain names and providing a service along that route. And that was really my journey um, of a real entrepreneurship um, was when I started the, uh, the domain name registration. Um, right. So, so how did, what was kind of the, determining factor that really pushed you to to pull the trigger on that first venture and then can you walk us through maybe the first few months like did you quit your job right away were, were you moonlighting like how, how did that look that's a great question um so i i had had you know i've been at the the beeper company for a number of years and i was uh, you know i was a young guy in my mid-20s um and i had had it was a public company and i had had a, a, a number of different bosses coming through and I seem to survive, you know, a lot of times a boss comes in and they replace um, a lot of the senior staff and I managed to survive every single new, you know, kind of wipeout of, of the team. Um, and, but each boss, uh, it was just, it was just terrible experience. Um, honestly, like it was a, a very toxic cultural um, office culture. And until I got my last boss, and um, and he was a, a real, you know, he was a good mentor. Like some real um, lessons learned from him. But along the way, um, I I started to realize like it's the life's too short to work for bad bosses. Mm-hmm. And so I started to look for like what can I do 
um, that's different. And so by this time, I, this, the one guy had gone off and started his own uh, dial up ISP. And I was doing some, um, some work for him on the side, um, you know, ordained by the, uh, by the um, paper company. They knew I was doing it. And I was just kind of helping him get set up. And there, I saw that there was a need um, for domains to be registered. They, the ISP was having people, customers call up and say, how do I register a domain name? And their customer service department would, it was very manual at the time, would charge $150 to fill in the um, email paperwork, do the searches, send off the paperwork, have it come back, then tell the customer, okay, your name, your domain name is registered. So this is like the equivalent of today going on GoDaddy and just like filling your info and clicking purchase? Um, yes, but this this $150 was on top of the domain name registration oh, wow. prices. So okay. this is just for the act of searching and sending the form in. Like, so right. it, it was quite, um, this is really very, very early, right? I mean, you're <laughs> dealing with internet, which is a predecessor to network solutions, which is a predecessor to VeriSign. So, um, what we did is I, or what I did is I um, coupled together a couple of search scripts that allowed people to search for a, a, a domain to see if it was available, then fill in their name and address, and I would take that information and then put it into an email form, which put their name and address into like five different spots, filled in um, the domain name, um, uh, na the, the name servers, with my own name server, so you know you you wouldn't have to ask the customer who doesn't know what their what a domain name server was at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I took all of the technical stuff out and just had an easy script where you could go to a website, domain domains direct, type in the name, see if it was available, put in your name and address and phone number, and it would uh, it would mail it email it off. And if you were successful, you would then receive literally a paper mailed invoice from the internet um, for your $35 per year registration fee. And my service was $20 instead of $100. And the ISP loved it because they didn't have to have to tie their customer service reps um, doing these $100 um, orders. And, and you know, they, at, at $100, they figured they were losing money. That's how manual it was. Right. And so um, I was doing it for $20 and then I would offer email forwarding and website forwarding as an upsell. And yeah, it was just a side gig. Um, I told, I had it as a side gig for about, gosh, at least a year um, hmm. before, you know, I, I, while I was still working at the, uh, at the beeper company. And then uh, what the impetus to like, how, turn that into a real business was I, my job at the paper company was to divest all the different assets. They had um, lots of different answered services. And so uh, once the last piece was sold off, um, I went on vacation, I had a bit of a severance package, you know, and my wife is saying, okay, so, you know, you need, you're coming to the end of your, like, your time off here, you need to get a real job. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? What, what's your plan? Right. And so I was interviewing for operations manager companies and um, operation manager roles. But I was like, if I could get listed in Yahoo, right? This is when Yahoo was a directory, not a search engine. If I could get listed in Yahoo, then, you know, this could bring in a few hundred dollars or a thousand dollars a month and it would just help us out. And I begged and pleaded with Yahoo Canada. And I managed to get listed in their free domain registration category. There were only three other people listed in there. And as soon as I got listed in there, I went from making, you know, $50 a week to making $3,000 a week. Cool. And so overnight, you know, I went from literally working myself as a side gig in the spare room to, oh my God, I need employees and a real company and real business. Uh, bank accounts and credit card processing, etc. Um, so it, I, it was uh, it was zero to 100 miles an hour overnight. Right. So did you ever end up getting that next job, or or this happened before you 
got any offers or, or accepted any offers? So it was it was really down to the wire. So I had I was interviewing for two jobs um, on the Friday, and I knew I, I had a really good feeling that they were going to offer it to me. And I was I had sent in many many requests to Yahoo Canada, and I <laughs> on the Saturday morning I sent in this absolutely just begging email. <laughs> like there was. I was groveling in, and I was like, if someone's reading this, because I had no one, no one was replying. Mm -hmm. So I was just rambling on and just like begging, please. Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't listen to me, blah, blah, blah. And um, the, on, on Monday morning, um, I got listed and the listing was um, for, for the website I had was yournamefree.com. Okay. And typically there, it would be in the directory, it would be your listing of your company and then a, a you know, a, at least one sentence description. But all it was, was the name of my website, all lowercase with no description. <laughs> so if somebody had read the email, gone to the directory, just typed in your name, free.com. Enter. That's it. Like no description whatsoever. But I just, just want this guy that. to stop sending us emails. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And, but just that, just the, the, uh, the and, and you know, with, with the name starting with a Y and it's an alphabetical directory, it was the last one, not the first one, but just being on that ladder, um, absolutely just, um, ch just changed my life. Right. And okay. So, I mean, that's incredible. And, and you can definitely take from that, the, the old adage of, you know, don't give up and keep pushing. Right. Cause if you never sent that last email, we might not be here right now, right? We Having wouldn't this be conversation. here. It's guaranteed we would not be here. I would be, you know, the operations manager for a laser eye surgery center and I'll, I'll probably uh, um, stay there my entire life. Right. Well, I owe a thank you to that <laughs> Yahoo employee then. Uh, awesome, Richard. So, so things start taking off. What's the next, what do kind of the next three to six months look like? Because I find it really easy to talk about the ending when things are good, but what I prefer to talk about is, is the, the beginning, right? Especially uh, once you make, you know, you start getting a little bit of that progress. Uh, where did you take it from there? So I, I had all kinds of issues. I mean, this is, this is um, 1999. So, uh, you know, I'm in Canada. We, you know, the banks um, were not allowing um, you to accept credit cards online. Hmm. And so, you know, the, the system that I had set up with them, um, I could only accept a card present. Um, and so they, I convinced them to allow me to accept, um, credit cards by telephone. Um, but, but only on visa, right? This is when you, your visa was through one bank, your MasterCard was through another, right? So I had, I got the visa bank on side. And so I just, you know, I tried to convince people to pay by visa. So I had visa enlarged on the website. Um, and, but occasionally people, and, and people would, you know, send in a, a form. This is, this is before SSL, right? So people are just on an open form, just typing in their credit card number. <laughs> Um, and coming in via an email, right? I mean, this, 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 it just makes you shudder now. Um, and I would get a MasterCard, an order in from, from uh, through MasterCard. Now, you know, my variable cost on this was very low, right? Because I was not providing the domain registration. Mm -hmm. I was providing that registration service, but um, I wasn't, you know, they would get a, a bill separately for the domain registration. So my service was, the act of, of helping them register the domain name and then the upsell on email and website 40. So I had a cost of $5 and I was selling it for 50. And so a great markup. Um, but if someone ordered that um, on, uh, if they ordered the, the domain search um, service, which was $20 on MasterCard, I would just print it out and put it into a file. Because I'm like, I have no way to charge the MasterCard. <laughs> <laughs> so um, then, but if they um, wanted the email or website forwarding, which was $50, which I had a hard cost of five, I'd be like, hey, we're having problems uh, processing MasterCard. Do you have a visa? And half the time they would say, yes, I have a visa. And half the time they would like, no, this is my only credit card. And so if it was their only credit card, I took $5 out of my own pocket paid for their upgrade 
and then printed out their order form and put it on the site. Hmm. And I went down to the US. I went to, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, Vancouver is just across the border from Seattle. And so I drove down to Seattle um, and got a, a, a shared office uh, or a, a, an address at a shared office and made an application um, for US banks to, to, uh, to get um, Visa and MasterCard. And the, uh, they said, okay, you know, you're approved. We just need to do a site visit. So then I went down to the shared office and I'm like, hey, I need a, a meeting room for the day. <laughs> so they're like, okay, you can have boardroom A. So I go into boardroom A. I'm like, oh, I need a, I need a, a boardroom that just has a desk, no, no boardroom table. So they're like, okay, you can have this office over here. So there was nobody in it. So I, I go in, say thank you, go back out to my car, come back in with three boxes, set up an, a full office, <laughs> right? Computer, monitor, files, pictures of my kids, plants, just, I move in, okay? Even have a sign, put the sign on the outside uh, of, the, of the shared office. Mm -hmm. Two hours later, the, uh, the rep, drops by for the site visit, they come in. I say, yeah, how can I help you? We sit down, we chat for 10 minutes, they get up, right? I explain the whole business to them and they get up, they leave and I'm approved for Visa MasterCard. I'm like, awesome. So then I went through and at this point I'm like eight months, I have eight months worth of MasterCard <laughs> orders to go through and I manually entered every single one and Jeez. collected all of the, uh, almost all, of the outstanding, but it was challenges like that, um, that, you know, you're, you're a one man show, you're doing everything. And, um, you know, that, that was the biggest challenge back then was, um, uh, figuring out how to get paid. Right. So, so from, from that experience early on, Richard, what would you say is the biggest takeaway? And, and secondly, I'm curious, did you then pack up those boxes again and drive and like leave the office empty and drive back up North? Yeah, because I, you know, I, you know, when I'm crossing the border, they're like, "What's the purpose of your visit?" I'm going down for a meeting. You yeah. know, when I go to the when I go to the shared office, they're like, "What do you need a thing for?" I'm like, "I need the I'm having a meeting, but I don't know what time they're showing up today." Mm -hmm. And so I set up my office, and then yeah, the meeting was ten minutes. Pack it all back up and and head back. But I guess That's great. the lesson the lesson is you know, you just don't take no for an answer, right? You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sitting in Canada and they're like, we, you don't, we, you're not allowed to operate an online business unless you're a big company. Well, I'm a, I'm a small entrepreneur. You know, they're like, sorry, we can't help you. Fine. I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'll go down to the United States, set up mm -hmm. a, a, a business down there. Um, and, you know, whatever the hoops they want you to jump through, I just jump through those, the hoops. And so the tenacity, mm -hmm. um, it is something that uh, I think a lot of entrepreneurs can can associate with, and you just you do whatever it takes. Um, and if if it takes being up for twelve hours um, it, uh, in a stretch at your desk, that's what you do. Hopefully, we we're able. I think we're able nowadays to work a little smarter, and we've got more software tools available to us that we don't have that we can have that live work balance. Mm -hmm. But whatever that obstacle is. Um, it just, you have to have the frame of mind that if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Yeah. So the, the fact that it's difficult is a, is positive because that lowers the number of people that are going to be competing with you or go be willing to do what it takes to, to, um, go down that entrepreneurial path. So, yeah. you know, every obstacle view that as not a frustration but as a positive, because you're like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the guy or the person that, that beats this or solves this problem or, or overcomes this obstacle. Um, and that will be one less, uh, you know, one more step up the rung um, of the ladder um, away from my competitors. Yeah, very, very well said. And, and that consistently comes up in terms of like most common trait of successful entrepreneurs, right? It, it's not like they're all, I mean, they're all very smart. But even just all the guests I've had on the show, like the one thing that consistently comes up is they push through, right? Because if you if you don't, you wouldn't be here, right? Exactly. There, there's just so many 
potential roadblocks uh, or places where you could say, no, I'm done, or no, I give up. And it's really the ones that push through that, uh, that are here to tell the tale. Uh, so really cool, really cool, Richard. So where do we go from there? What's, what's kind of the next step of the story? How, where does that business grow to? And then you have a couple of them. So I want to try and touch it at least on, at least on each one briefly, uh, before we kind of settle on what you're doing right now. So, um, fast forward probably a year and a bit, um, the domain registration business is hitting on all, all cylinders. Um, I've got a, a, a staff. Um, small staff locally in Vancouver, also have um, contractors in um, Eastern Europe and um, an office in Bermuda. And I moved to Bermuda kind of as a tax refugee, right? I've got got visions of selling for tens of millions of dollars. Um, Moved to uh, Bermuda and um, a month after I get there, I'm diagnosed with colon cancer. Oh God! And I have a three-month-old. My wife is there with me, and um, and basically, I'm told that you know I'll I'll likely never leave the hospital, um, and you know should really get things wrapped, wrapped up. Um, by by just virtue of miracles, I um, it turns out to be stage one and not stage D. They they had originally thought it was stage D when they first went in, and um, didn't need chemotherapy, but. It, you know, was told like it's genetic. Um, it's you've got an eighty percent chance of reoccurrence and a fifty percent chance it'll kill you in the next five years. So you got like forty percent chance of dying in the next five years. That's pretty sobering when you've got a three month old um, and you're thirty years old. So I, you know, I basically sold the company to the first person who said yes. And 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 what what we did is I basically, you know, I moved to Bermuda, so I had a tax bill got enough cash to pay off my taxes and got uh, paper stock in this, in this company that I had merged, merged my assets into. So you fast forward another year, I'm living in California. Life is good. I'm working 35 hours a week. My health is, is definitely improving a, a tremendous amount, but the company has basically been doing Enron accounting and there's just, they sell my assets off and give me a severance check. And I'm left pay, holding what I thought was millions of dollars worth of private stock, and it's just got zero value, hmm. right? So the tip there, the lesson there is, no matter what your circumstances are, if you are trading your company or your assets for private shares, you need to do as much or more due diligence on them as they are doing on you. And hmm. We failed. My team failed to uh, to do that uh, adequate due diligence, and um, yeah, we we should have caught the fact that these were not good guys to be uh, climbing into bed with, but we did, and I lost I lost my company, and so I get back to, to Vancouver. It's 2002. I'm basically you know I'm not penniless, but I'm fairly close to. Um, but I've got my health. That's, that's what I keep telling myself. Mm-hmm. And so I ask, I reach out to the customers that I've been serving for the um, prior three years and say, look, I'm, I've been selling tens of thousands of domain names, um, registering tens of thousands of domain names for you guys. How do you guys make money? Because mm-hmm. you all seem to be working from home and living a pretty good life. And some of these guys taught me, took me under their wing and said, this, this is how you buy and sell domain names. This is how you research which domains are worth buying, which ones are, are not. And, and I, I jumped in with both feet. And so I, um, I loved it. It was, you know, gave me the chance to work from home yet still bring in, um, uh, money to, to support my family and, um, not have the, um, you know, the three offices I basically was just, it was, it was just working for myself and it was, um, so refreshing not to have um, a a tremendous number of families depending on you guiding the company. Um, Mm -hmm. And also uh, just, you know, kind of going back to to what I'd see my dad do, where it was like, you eat what you kill. And I was hungry. And um, so I I found it exciting, it was fun, it was very um, uh, cutting edge in terms of uh, domain names, Um, buying and selling domain names was a a new um, forefront online. And so um, I, uh, I, I just 
spent the next 10 years buying and selling domain names. Wow. It, it's, it's that lucrative? I mean, I, I have no experience in the area, so I'm very curious. Yeah, so I get, um, so what I specialized in, I mean, there's lots of different ways to make money in, in domain names. So, you know, as a domain name is an annual contract, uh, annual service contract, and at the end of the year, if you don't renew your domain, your domain expires and then gets deleted. And a lot of people make money in um, looking at the de deleting domain list, identifying domains that are worth um, value and registering them. And then, then they auction them back off or they list them for sale. Um, but what I found was my niche was um, finding, you know, a lot of people back in the day had um, false information in there. Who is like the who is is, is the uh, is the publicly listed um, domain inf uh, owner information. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people put fake information. Half of it would be true, but half would be wrong. So they, they, they might have the correct address, um, but an incorrect phone number, or they might have um, a fake phone number and a mostly correct address, but they would change the house number. Mm -hmm. uh, just to, to avoid you know, all the incoming spam, uh, whether it was by phone, by email, or um, by postal mail. And so I, I said, I, I thought, well, if these people have fake information, um, they're not receiving, they're not being bombarded by all of the guys that, that are, you know, buying and selling domain names, making offers on, on domains that they could see are not in use or are underused. So if I could figure out a way to contact these people, I could make them the low, a fairly low offer and I wouldn't be competing with all of these other guys. Mm -hmm. And so I, I read this book um, and it was written by a bill collector and he was, you know, he was using it to help find missing children. But he was talking about all of the techniques that he used in skip tracing, like bill collecting, mm -hmm. to track down missing kids. And I was like, as I'm reading this, I'm like, I wonder if I could use these same techniques to track down people who have fake domain information. And sure enough, it worked. Um, mm -hmm. And so I used all of these tools that were, um, some were available online, some it was just crawling in. Um, all of it was 100% legal, like nothing shady, but it was just the process. And so it was as if I was a bill collector tracking someone down. Um, I would call their neighbors, I would call their parents, I would, you know, figure out who their siblings were, what high school they went to, like I would really track these people down. And then I would get in touch with them and then make them an offer. I'm like, hey, you registered this domain name back in 1995. I can see you're not using it. And they're like, oh, I've, yeah, I've been paying the renewal on that, but I don't know. I'll sell it to you here. 500 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. Get the, They would get their fees back that they had paid um, or, you know, you'd make them some some reasonable offer uh, to motivate them and buy the domain. And then I could then sell it on to one of these other guys who had been in the business longer than me um, or just keep it in my own inventory and then list it for sale. Uh, but I did a lot of, of just hustling, like just tracking people down, uh, spending hours and hours tracking them down, making an offer, buying the, convincing them to sell, buying the domain and then selling it on. Um, and I did that. It was, and it was lucrative. Yeah. So what, what's like the av you, you said you're buying them for, you know, maybe a few hundred, maybe 500 bucks. What are some of the, maybe average and then like higher ends that some of them would go, like, are we talking five figures? Uh, yeah, so I did a lot, I did a lot that were in the hundreds um, range. Wow. Uh, like the hundreds of dollars, right? Oh, okay. Um, I, but in terms of um, some of the larger ones at that time, the largest one I did, um, it was a domain name that um, was uh, music related. And mm -hmm. I knew from using an online tool that it would have a lot of what we call type in traffic. People would just type it into the browser, type it in .com and just see what, what was there. Right. And so I tracked it down. The guy lived in Scotland. And um, so I made him an offer in July. And, you know, I made him an offer of $15,000, right? And I, I had an advertiser in the, the, the was already lined up and they said, oh, we'll pay you per visitor. Every time someone visits, we'll pay you. Just, it was what we call now zero click. 
Um, and so I, I contact this guy in July and he's like, no, I don't want to sell. I contact him in August, September, October, November, December. Finally, you know, it's getting down to Christmas time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, psychologically, he's starting to spend the money already, right? I'm yeah. like, think of what you could buy your, your girlfriend, <laughs> your wife for this money. And so he says, well, if you, if, you know, I'm in Scotland, it's 50% tax rate here. So if you pay me $30,000, I'll sell the domain to you. Hmm. And I, I hang up and I think about it and I'm humming and on. There's so many, uh, but it's, a, it's, this is definitely a big step up from doing hundred, hundred dollar or $500 deals, mm -hmm. $30,000. I'm like, you only live once. Yeah. And so I paid him 30,000, connected it to the advertiser. And yeah, it was, it, that ended up paying for my house. Jeez. So, and, and it's the house I'm sitting in today. Right? <laughs> you know, that's, that's coming on 20 years, um, you know, 18 years ago, but, uh, you know, over, over time it's paid for the house and you know, that, that's the kind of lucrative things that were happening back then. Um, mm -hmm. and since then, yeah, domains have just gone up in value. And right. so, um, you know, I, um, I bought resume.com, um, logo.com, face.com, um rides.com now were, in the were, last... were those was this like over 10 years ago that you bought yeah, those no, no. Domain, so, I'm, so I'm just i'm just naming all of these all of these names um are names that are in my inventory and each one of those the purchase was more than six figures was into the oh, six wow. figures so the 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 domains the price of domains is continuing to to go up and up so to give you an idea voice.com sold last year for 30 million dollars i mean you can think of it as it's 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 virtual real estate right it, like like invest in a house invest in a domain name you exactly. know a lot fewer costs per year to keep the domain name running too right as compared yeah. to that house so yeah. so i look at these as um as corner lot real estate and the, the cost of maintaining them is the capital that you've invested as well as the renewal fees and right. so on some of them, I've got partners to help finance on others. I've been able to um, earn, you know, earn the, the money to, to buy the domains. Um, and on others, you know, we've just churned through, we've, we've taken in a name and I've sold it off. And so, um, but over, you know, I've been in this business now 20 years and over time I've built up a, a small stable of um, high value one word.com domains that Personally, I think are, are, are each worth a million dollars or more. Well, that, that's what stood out the most when I kind of saw your profile and, and looked into more of your biography. I was like, those are some pretty damn good domains. Uh, so, so I was really interested to hear how that came about. W would you say, Richard, I mean, I'm assuming, especially because it's gotten easier uh, to, to buy domains, period. Um, is this still kind of... Uh, is this tough to break into right now? Like if someone's listening to this and they're like, that sounds really cool. It sounds right up my alley. You know, how hard is it to break into? Would you advise it against it? And then let's definitely talk about how you got into logo.com as, as well. Sure. So, you know, it's a tough business. It's not, it's, it's, uh, I, I'd say it's like any business in that the opportunity is wrapped up in work. You know, you make mm -hmm. your own luck. Um, you have to make your own, um, it's not something that, that is uh, just easy to, to slide into. Um, but for the, for the right people, for the right personality, yeah, the opportunity is still there. And the resources are, are there um, much more so than when I started. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's DN Academy, that stands for Dominion, but dnacademy.com um, is a great resource for, for learning and taking an online course and seeing if it's for you or not, right? Um, and there's there's lots of forums, um, domain name forums that you can uh, that you can join and, and chat with people to see, hey, is there something here? But yeah, I, I know um, I've seen a lot of young people getting in there, and they're they're doing the grind um, of you know finding names that they can buy for twenty dollars to fifty dollars and sell on within a few days for a hundred to five hundred, and if they if they get into the rhythm they get a, a certain set of buyers that are that, that start to trust them um, and you know you can then specialize in a certain vein of domain names whether that's um, a certain um, you know 
um, TLD, like a lot of .co or .cc, or you know, there's a lot of new TLDs coming um, coming out. Mm -hmm. And so, if you specialize in these, um, you can start to understand the value, right? It's like dealing with a real estate agent. You don't want to just, you know, you can't just pick any real estate agent to buy any piece of real estate. You want a real estate agent that knows the local economy. And right. same with the uh, with the specialization of domaining. So a lot of guys go and they specialize in a certain vein of domains a certain locality, whether it's ge geographic or um, the, the ending or the type of domain, right? It could be like, I only specialize in, you know, plumbing domains across all of the cities, but mm -hmm. I know the value of plumbing and I know how to, to sell it on to plumbers, et cetera. So th there's lots of different things, but it's wrapped up in a lot of work. Um, it takes a fair amount of time invested. Um, and then you have to have some risk capital. But it's not, it's definitely not something that I recommend that you quit your day job and jump into. You right. know, try it out on the side, put a little bit of funds into it. I, I do mean only a little bit just to see, hey, is this something that I have a, a natural talent for or a learned skill for? Right. Um, and then give that a try. But it's not something that, uh, hey, you know, there's a gold rush, anyone can do it. Right. Now, now what I'm also really interested in is how did this lead to you building out logo.com and then uh, how do you realize which domains you want to hold on to and not even just hold on to but actually build into websites and, oh, yeah. and businesses yeah so um over the years i i a lot of domains have passed across my desk um whether it's names that i've seen or whether names that i've taken in and um and, and sold on or taken on and held. And to answer your question, the ones that I hold are generally ones, not 100% not of the time, but generally they're ones that I believe that I could be involved in a business, an end user business on. So um, as an example, when, we, when resume.com came available, and what I mean came available, I mean, it was up for auction. Um, when resume.com came available and we saw that resumes.com was also available, so that was the, you could buy the pair off two different people, um, I partnered with that, um, part, brought in a partner who um, put in a lot of the funds to purchase the domains. And we um, brought the name in, we had it right away saying, hey, we're gonna build a resume builder on this, right? We had a clear vision, we started right away you know, it was a overnight six year success in terms, <laughs> in terms of like, it was blood, sweat and tears. We tried it three different ways. Um, we had an offshore team, we had an offshore onshore team, and then we just had an onshore team. And each time you're switching teams, we're actually taking the website, rewriting it and starting over. <clears throat> so a lot of, a lot of money, uh, a lot of time, but um, we, we finally cracked it. And, Along the way, we learned a lot, right? It's, it's very difficult to go from just being a domain broker, in essence, to being a domain, to a website developer. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but we, we learned a lot of lessons along the way. Can, can you talk and about was, that? Because I, uh, I, yeah, I it was, yeah, like especially going through those three iterations, like what were kind of the key takeaways and, and what do you think ultimately led to that success? Yeah, so... You know, I think that um, running the offshore team, you need uh, an, a, a project manager running that offshore team who either you are having an excellent relationship with online and you can communicate clearly and you're on the same um, wavelength culturally, brainwave, you know, um, or you need one of your local people or yourself to go over there either every month or every quarter or permanently um, to run that team. That's what, what we finally realized. And none of our team was willing to go over to the Ukraine. Um, and we weren't communicating well, right? The, the, with the time zone difference and also with cultural difference, just when we described something, um, you know, what they were hearing was not well, and then delivering wasn't what we were asking for. And so finally we, we bit the bullet and said, look, it's going to be you know, more than four times uh, more the cost uh, to do it locally, but let's give that a try because it's mm -hmm. our last kick of the can. 
And we did that and then it started to really work. We, and we assembled all of our local people in the same office. It was a really tight, tight, you know, startup office. No, no slides, no, no stock fridge. It was just, <laughs> it, it was a, as a, uh, a, 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 a real startup office, right? Not, right. Nothing, nothing you see on in the movies. Um, and we, you know, the, the, that was a big, um, and expensive lesson. To, to spend that amount of time and that amount of money trying to save money. And so what I wish we had just done from the very beginning was just done it locally. Um, and so we ended up um, building resume out. Um, I had 4 million, 4 million users. It was a freemium model where, um, you know, 99% of the people um, were free and then 1% actually paid um, for the services. And it was, it was successful. And we sold it on to Indeed, um, which is a very large um, job board company um, based out of Austin, Texas. Um, and one of the reasons we sold to them was that they were going to take over all of our employees. So our, our entire team based here in Vancouver went with went over to Indeed, and that was very important to us. Um, but the all of the lessons that we learned in building out resume are were lessons that we could then um, take on to our next project. And so we looked at our inventory, um, or we had been looking at our inventory and we're like, okay, so what, what would you want to do next, right? We've got some stock photography um, domains. We've got some ride sharing based domains. We've got some, you know, dating based domains. Um, but we loved logo because it's kind of like that, uh, that shaving um, ad from decades ago, you know, I love the company so much I bought the product or I, you know, or the product so much about the company, right? Mm -hmm. We, we, I personally have been a logo design customer for about a hundred times. Mm -hmm. And so I've gone through that painful process and I've paid everywhere from $5 to $15,000 for logo design. And so, but the, the, the conversations and the process were very similar in every single time. And we thought, well, what if we, what if we put all of those conversations into an algorithm and front ended all of those conversations? And then, you know, with, with, whether you're using a design agency or a, a freelance designer, what it comes down to in logo design is that you know it when you see it. It's kind of like that Malcolm Gladwell book, the uh, you know, blink. It's like, when you see it, you're like, that's, that's what I like. You, mm -hmm. Even if you're not a designer and you're not going to say, oh, I like that it's not, uh, that it's sans serif and it's, you know, the spacing between the, whatever, right? You know it when you see it, even if you can't describe it. And so what we, what we wanted to do was take all of those conversations, program, it, program um, them into an algorithm, and then display the results of those conversations. And then you just sit back and scroll through and be like, that's pretty close. And you click on that, that logo design. And then you, then, then it's like, okay, well, what font do you want? Cause you, we're, we're showing you in a certain font, but what font would you like? And I'm not going to ask you, you know, there's what, 20, 20,000 fonts. I bet you can't name more than four, right? Ariel, Verdana, Times Roman. You're come on. Do you know any others? It's more than I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you know, but if we show you your company name or your slogan, in a font, mm -hmm. you don't need to know the name. So then you just scroll through, you pick a font, we, put, we plug it in, you know, you want an icon, we can change, we, we make some icon suggestions, but you can go in and change it. Same with color palettes. We're not gonna dump you off into the color picker and say, oh, tell us the Hexonet, uh, you, know, um, you know, or the Pantene color number, right? It's like, here are some color palettes picked by professional um, designers saying that these are the popular colors and these are the popular color palettes, you know, and here, here's your, your logo design that you've gotten so far in all of them display, just scroll through. And when you see what you like, you'll know it, you click on it. And so we can take this, like this long conversation down and we can squish it down to like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So from the time you land on the website to the time that you're, you've got this, it's 20 minutes. And you know, the, the, the back end behind this is insane. Like we, when we first bought logo, we tried doing this, we weren't able to do it because the technology wasn't there. So we shelved it. 
right? It was actually pre-resume. So we shelled logo, just left it in it, and then work on resume. Sold resume, I also did a, a conference on domain names, sold that, and then went back to logo. And the, the, the five years between, you know, trying it for the first time and going it the second time, you know, you've got AWS, you've got the ability to do these um, instantaneous um, um, spin up um, servers. So when you type in some information, instead of one server chugging along that, you know, that I'm paying for and maintaining on a shelf that I'm paying for the shelf, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just sending out, we just send out a command to AWS and instantaneously it spins up, you know, 300 servers, does calculations on all 300, spits back the results. And to you, it looks instantaneous. But what's happened in the meantime is we've actually, you know, turned on 300 um, servers instantaneously, loaded on the software and then come back. And it's mind boggling what you're able to accomplish today versus five years ago. And so yeah. um, we're able to, uh, to really just, um, you know, accomplish um, so much more now than, than we could before. And especially 20 years, I'm sure you guys take MasterCard no problem now, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the ability- Two minutes to your um, Stripe accounts, you know, exactly. ready to go, or PayPal, or, you know, take exactly. your pick. Yeah. Very cool, Richards. I mean, what what's super interesting to me is, is, I mean, not only kind of like the almost marketplace aspect of buying and selling domains, but the fact that you can then kind of treat your roster as your playground and say, you know, what do I want to work on within these don't, you know, which ones do I want to build out? So super, super interesting. Yeah. Richard, do you have any, like you've been, you've been in that industry for a few decades now, you've been in and out of multiple businesses. What would you give as two or three pieces of advice to someone who's right at the beginning, right? Or they're in their nine to five, right? They know they want to do something more. They, they have that entrepreneurial spirit or drive. They're not sure where to start, or maybe they're just, you know, moonlighting and, and, and going through some tough times. What are two or three things you would tell them? You know, I, I, I my, my kids are, are um, in their late teens, early 20s. So, you know, I've got lots of advice for them as well. You know, I think that they'll, they're more prone to listen to someone else than, than to me. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I have been spending a lot of time thinking about, you know, as a young person coming into the market uh, today, you know, you got your all, your, the whole set of challenges, especially this year. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would say be helpful, right? Whatever you're doing, be helpful because the, the money exchanging hands in a business, um, whether it's for, for um, a service or for a product, the money is a thank you, right? You're helping that you're delivering value. They're thanking you with, with the, the, the money. And so um, be helpful. And it's not just about earning the money. It's about um, contributing to your community, right? I'm not saying work for free. I'm saying contribute mm -hmm. in a positive way, deliver a positive product. You know, the, the, with resumes, it was about helping people get online. Um, sorry, helping people get a better job um, by utilizing um, a, our resume building service um, that, than they could have if, if we didn't exist. Um, with Logo, it's about getting people online with a digital presence or a refresh um, you know, better and faster than they could if we didn't exist. And so it's about delivering value. So look for that in your own, in your own sense. It doesn't matter what you um, are doing, but just make sure that it's not just about earning the cash, but it's about contributing. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, and as an entrepreneur, you really need to balance the tenacity and persistence with um, you know, flogging a dead horse, right? So when you're looking at various aspects or various opportunities, you know, when you go in, you're going to have a struggle of, am I being persistent or am I flogging a dead horse, okay? So before you do that, remember the phrase, it's easier to stay out than to get out, okay? So before you start that project, before you take that role on, think about, is this something that is being helpful? Is this something that I am going to enjoy? Is this something that I'm willing to dedicate six months, a year, two years to? before I reach that point of deciding, am I going to you know, keep persisting or am I going to, am I going to close it down because I'm plugging it that horse? You know, it's easier to stay out than to get up. And 
And that's especially true if you're going in with a partnership, um, you know, because a partnership is like a marriage. And, you know, one of my, my, one of my first bosses, you know, we were negotiating, um, uh, our company was negotiating with another company and it was about doing shared business opportunity. And the other side was negotiating really hard, like really hard. And so, you know, on the third meeting, after the third meeting, he, my boss is like, you know what? We're not gonna do a deal. And the other side is like, what? We're so close. And he's like, you know what? You negotiated just too hard. And it's easier for me to stay up than it would be for me to get up with you. And he just mm -hmm. literally walked away from a million dollar deal. And I talked to him after, cause I was in shock, right? But I, I put all this work into to getting it. And he's like, I, I'm saving us both, a, you know, just an unfathomable amount of headache that it, and, and, um, and, you know, there's all kinds of red flags. So if you see any red flags, you know, just remember that phrase, it's easier to stay out than to get out. Um, but, you know, there's so much opportunity out there as a young person getting onto the, um, doing online businesses today. Um, my goodness, I, I wish I was, you know, 30 years younger um, because there's, there's just so much available um, and there's so many people willing to help. So in the same way that I reached out onto a forum and asked for help and people helped me, I think there's even more people available now. And so I would, you know, I, I, I cannot under stress the importance of LinkedIn. Um, you know, I have no investment whatsoever, but my goodness, the, the ability for you to contact senior people uh, in your industry and just ask them questions, mm -hmm. ask them for help. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. And um, I really wish I had done the same earlier in my, in my life um, when I was coming across um, domain names and coming across people in the same city, obviously they're in the same business. I should have picked up the phone and said, hi, you know, we're in the same business. You want to grab a coffee? Mm -hmm. I didn't. I was too shy. I was introverted. But my goodness, like, just just pick up the phone, send an email, send out a LinkedIn message. You know, maybe five out of 100 people respond. But that's five more than if you didn't ask anybody. So, yeah. you know, just don't be shy and ask. It's, it's, it's a great lesson. And, and going back to where we started, right, that could be that Yahoo connection that sets your career off. So uh, we're coming full circle here, Richard. This is yeah, this is really great. Really good to hear kind of the whole story and uh, the lessons that you've learned from it. I, I've really appreciated it. So if, if people are more interested, obviously, we want to, you know, remind us of, of the, the current website that you're focused on. And if people do want to reach out to you, maybe follow you or connect with you personally, where do you recommend that they go? Sure, absolutely. So logo.com, L-O-G-O, <laughs> it's no, no spelling required, um, is, is our, my current project. Um, please check it out. There's no fee whatsoever to, to try it. Um, you never pay until you found a design that you actually want to download. Uh, and it starts at $20. Like it's, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to turn the industry on its head. Um, and for me personally, um, hit me up on LinkedIn. It's Richard Lau um, or go to Lau, lau.com. Um, and you know, right now I'm, I'm preparing for a, a 200 kilometer um, charity ride. So that's what you can oh, wow. read more about it on my website. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm an open book. I'm help, helpfully, happy to help um, in any way I can. Awesome. Well, Richard, thanks again for coming on the show. I, I'm sure this will help a whole bunch of people and, uh, and uh, great to hear your story. Thank you. Awesome.